Hi everyone, I'm Chuck Hilton of Charles Hilton Architects and welcome back to our next episode of Craftsman's Corner where we go off the boards and meet some of today's most skilled craftsmen and innovative building material suppliers in the market today. We'll learn about the special products that they're creating and how they're made. Today we're meeting with a team from Interstate and Lakeland Lumber. They're based in Greenwich, Connecticut and we're talking about the fabrication of exterior cellular PVC trim. We're on location of one of our projects in Largemont, New York, waterfront project where we did an extensive renovation on the interior and a complete exterior facelift of this 6,000 square foot Mediterranean home. Let's get started. So I'd like to introduce uh, Ken Middlestadt and Bill McDermott of Interstate and Lakeland Lumber. Interstate is a family-owned company. It's more than 100 years old, and it's one that we rely on regularly for great materials and great fabrication of our, of our products. And with that, let me um, ask Ken and Bill to say a few words and tell you a little bit more about Interstate and what they do. Well, as Chuck said, Interstate, it's our uh, 100th year anniversary this year. Exciting time. Uh, we're a full-service lumber yard framing packages, windows, doors, siding, uh, with supplemented by our uh, mill shop in Bethel, Connecticut. And uh, I'm gonna introduce Bill to talk a little bit about our uh, millwork division. Our Bethel millwork facility is a 40,000 square foot facility filled with state-of-the-art machinery that allows us to fabricate millwork out of PVC or wood uh, for millwork intense homes and a lot of the fabrication that we do, we can fully assemble the projects at the shop, finish them, paint them, disassemble them, send them to the site so they can be easily reassembled uh, by the site crew. So in recent years, we've been using a lot more cellular PVC because the material is very durable, it's recyclable at the end of its life, and it's also a cost-effective alternative to wood. But not everyone understands how to properly install and fabricate PVC, and I think these guys at Interstate are among the absolute best at doing this. So let me begin by asking Ken and Bill to explain exactly what cellular PVC is and some of the pros and cons of working with it. Well, PVC polyvinyl chloride, it's a free foam cellular PVC product that more and more is replacing wood on even the highest end homes available in all different thicknesses from quarter inch to inch and a half thickness. The great thing about it is it's totally rot resistant, it'll last forever, uh, the paint lasts a lot longer on any product that we do. Over the past 10 years especially, we've fabricated all of the things that were designed in wood in PVC. Bill, tell you a little bit about our shop and our successes and how we do it. So over the years, we've perfected working with PVC. One of them is finding the right distributor, Versatex, that supplies us a high quality PVC in thick material and wide material. Uh, we figured out the tooling, what kind of tooling we should have, the rates of feeds and speeds, the angles of the cutters, and to, to, to really give a, a better product than anybody else is pro providing. Thanks guys. So let's go up to the house and let's take a close up look at some of what you've done here. Great. So we moved up to one of the balconies on this house and we're going to take a look, closer look at some of the, the pieces of the installation, starting with the cornice. And here uh, we have a Mediterranean cornice where we see there's a V-groove board on the soffit. There's large brackets supporting the roof and we have an astrical molding underneath those brackets. So this is a piece of cellular PVC as it would arrive to the job site. You can tell it's very dense, kind of hard uh, plastic and you can see crisp shapes that can be cut into the material. So Bill, maybe just explain to us a little bit how, you, how each of these things are fabricated, including this uh, example of a bracket. Sure, so the material isn't that thick, inch and a half is the thickest that we can get it, so a bracket like that would have to be made of multiple pieces. So something like that would be four pieces glued together with a PVC adhesive, clamped and glued together. After it's glued together, we would shape it with either a shaper or a CNC machine and then go through, sand all the joints by hand, prime it, usually sand again, to get, so we end up with a nice smooth finish that we have here. 
PVC is a great product, but it does expand and contract to the temperature. So we have to factor that in. The best thing to do is try to hide any joint between behind something else so you don't see the expansion and contraction. Versidex has a great guidebook of how they think that we should deal with all joints and they'll recommend a lap joint that is glued in the back um, to, to reduce the movement, but whenever possible, it's best to try to hide the uh, joints. Next thing we're going to talk about is railing sections, and this is something I think you guys just do so well, and it's tricky. Um, this is a section of, uh, of baluster and railing that's very similar to, to exactly what's here, and you can see that it's made up of a composition of a whole group of sections, but there's openings here and openings down below. One of the other uh, challenges with PVC is it's not terribly strong in bending, okay? So when you have a big section that's built up, it would tend to sag. And so there needs to be reinforcing. And also, again, just because it only comes uh, up to an inch and a half thick, it needs to be glued up before it can be turned. So um, I'll let these guys explain a little bit more about those elements. Okay, well, um, you see a uh, partial section here, which tells a little bit of a story, as Chuck was saying, but um, we've come up with a way to fabricate this rail and make the installation also very easy and the painting very easy. We pre-manufacture it complete, assemble, and then we disassemble it and deliver, which makes a dream for the uh, installer. So Bill will touch a little bit on how this all went together with the metal that's underneath all the sections to support it from sagging, brackets that are bolted into wood posts below. So Bill, if you want to take it. So each spindle starts out with a block. This one happens to be five pieces that will be clamped and glued together with the PVC cement. And we end up having this turned and sanded and primed. But this is actually made up from here to here. You actually have three pieces glued together here, three here. So there's a lot of pieces in total. Um, from one spindle top and bottom, you're talking almost 25 pieces glued together. And <clears throat> we start with lock mitered corners to make the bottom rail and the top rail. And we'll, we will fully assemble this, as, as Kenny said, and all of this, in this particular case, since the balustrade, the spindles are very close together, we've primed, it, or primed and finished it at the shop so the painters aren't trying to paint in between here. We send it out to the site. Each balustrade is measured and pre-cut and then you will, so when it's sent to the site, basically the guys are putting it together. The fasteners are through the newel into the balustrade assembly. So really when this is done, there's minimal exposed fasteners. That's Great explanation, and let's head down and let's look at the front door surround and some of the really special work you did down there. So we're back down here at the ground floor and we'll just take a look at some work on the facade. This front door surround is really special and it's got a little bit of everything that these guys do and do so well in their shop. So um, why don't you just explain to us what we're seeing at the front door? Quite a challenging uh, project that was a lot of fun to be involved in. Started out with uh, a great shop drawing from Chuck, which we basically pull the components out of, and then we draw the individual components with our CAD drawings, and then it goes into our shop. We started out with the pilasters at the bottom, the cornice, and brackets, and piece by piece, shop drawings are done by our office, submitted to Chuck, and it evolves from there. It goes into our shop and uh, the different ways which you've heard about of running moldings you see here and laminating and carving, uh, everything's right here. It's a lot of uh, really intense PVC work in one area. We're very proud of it and very proud to be part of it with Chuck. Well, thank you to Ken and thank you to Bill and thank you to the Khan family for all the wonderful materials and work you've done on this and many other projects through the years. Again, we think Cellular PVC is a great modern option for exterior trim. Uh, it's very durable, very versatile, and can be very cost-effective for these projects. We'll see you next time.